David here with Guide Recommended. Out on the canoe today, gonna do some fly fishing for bluegills. So, I'm on a little, uh, little lake close to the house. I got you, you're basically riding in the front seat of the canoe. Um, beautiful day. So, what we're gonna do, hoping that you can see the water there. What we're gonna do is, uh, Paddle over, I don't know if you can see it, but right over there is a little outlet into this small lake. All right, I'm gonna show some fish catching here. So um, you can see me casting a little bit, but what you're gonna find is uh, towards the end, about the six minute mark, I go through the exact setup, setup for catching these bluegill. I describe what the lake is like. I describe uh, what kind of rod I'm using, leaders, tippet, uh, flies, all that good stuff. So stay tuned, thanks. Thank you. 
Hi, David here. I'm going to talk about uh, three things for bluegill fishing. One is reading the water. Two is the setup. I'll talk about my setup. And then B3 and flexible. That my little experience here today showed me that you got to be willing to change things up in order to catch some fish. So this lake is really like three different shapes. All right. And it has two inflows, one at the north end, one over here where I tried fishing, and then it has one outflow. All right. Our wind was blowing in this direction. Wind. All right? So when I first came. I thought, ah, inflow from some, you know, some uh, springs and runoff is going to drive uh, food into this area. So that's actually the first place I went to. Didn't have any luck. Paddling from here to here, I decided not to because I actually forgot my coffee. So came back over and I planted myself literally in the stream we just flowed into. So um, right at the outflow of that stream with the idea that the wind was blowing food you know anything airborne is going to be getting blown this way and you've got a funneling down effect of uh, the you know food stuff into uh, or out of the lake so all right the second thing i wanted to talk about is the setup and i'll have some uh, some close-up pictures of this stuff as well so it was a three weight rod, right? Um, had a weight forward, floating line. And then onto that, I tied a five X, seven and a half foot leader, tapered leader. All right, with that leader onto that, I had a 6x tippet, right? And it varied length, Ooh, two peas and tippet. So um, nibbled that guy down as I went along. First, I had a popper. Let me see, I'll dig that guy out real quick and I'll take a still picture of it. Um, yellow popper, I absolutely got skunked with the yellow popper. So, little yellow popper. So, popper. All right, from there, I tie it on. I'm hoping you can see that. A, a large kind of beetle, really an attractor kind of pro, uh, fly. Um, with a squirmy wormy. So squirmy wormies, right? You've got But it wasn't until I tied on a pheasant tail nymph. All right, so for my setup, I had that weight forward line we talked about. Onto that, I had a 5x leader, seven and a half feet long. I tied about a foot of 6x tippet on. I had that beetle attractor pattern, okay. Onto the back of that hook was about 18 inches of 6x fluorocarbon tippet, fluorocarbon. And then onto there, I had a size 16 bead head. That's a little guy, size 16 bead head, pheasant tail nymphs. So I'd really appreciate it if you went to Guide Recommended Fly Fish Bluegills. Thanks, and please subscribe to Guide Recommended.